Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and I'm determined to figure out the mystery of our great value supercar. You see, this BMW i8 was flipped back at auction three times over, and I'm the last man on that totem pole. But at over 70% off, well, how could I lose? The quick answer to that question is that the BMW dealership that this was last seen by recommended an engine replacement, which will cost tens of thousands of dollars. But it's really strange because this car seems to run totally perfect. That is for about two or three minutes before it begins overheating. I started with some at-home diagnosis on the BMW, and even after several tests with better than expected results, we came up short in trying to find the actual problem here. Today we'll be taking the car to Eurocharged, an independent shop in Orlando, Florida, and plug it directly into a BMW-based diagnostic scanner to see if we can get a better idea of what our failure point is. After towing the i8 into the shop's parking lot, I attracted the attention of someone that was clearly familiar with this car and knew all too much about it. Yeah, this is it. This is the car. You know this car. <laughs> we'll hear his full commentary in just a moment. Now imagine the feeling of driving into a local repair shop and they're familiar with the car before it even gets into their service bay. Something seems wrong here. Now I want to thank everyone for their comments, direct messages, and emails. It's really helped shed the light on our overheating issue, but there was one very popular theory among all of you, and that was that since this car was a prior repossession, what are the chances that it was sabotaged? What I want to do really quick is pull up the Carfax on our i8. It's going to show you how crazy of a life this car... Oh shoot, it's stepmom. Sam. Sam. Coming. Why is the door locked? You better not be in there looking at a new car project. One minute, mom, I'll be right there. If you do not open this door, I'm just going to check your browser history later. That was a close one. You see, my mom's got the router set up to track my browsing history, but she'll never find it. That's because I use NordVPN to encrypt all my browsing data. A VPN connects to the internet through an encrypted virtual tunnel. It's secure, untrackable, and makes your traffic invisible to the bad guys, which is especially vital if you frequent public Wi-Fi. NordVPN has been my VPN of choice for well over a year now, and I use it daily. Besides its security benefits, NordVPN has many additional uses, including the all-popular content unblocking. You see, content providers like Netflix and YouTube only display specific content in specific regions. With NordVPN, you can reroute your traffic basically anywhere in the world and unlock an unlimited amount of fresh new content. And whether you browse on your desktop or mobile, NordVPN has an app for your device. I even have it loaded on my Fire Stick. Whether you're trying to hide your online car buying addiction or just trying to keep your data away from prying eyes, NordVPN is the most trusted trusted name in virtual private networks. And right now, when you visit nordvpn.com slash samcrack or click the link in the description box, you're gonna get an additional four months totally free with a two year membership, which costs under $4 a month. It's a tremendous value and something that will end up paying for itself. Again, that's at nordvpn.com slash samcrack. And I gotta give a huge thanks to NordVPN for securing my online life and for also sponsoring this video. Now back to the Carfax report. Let me quickly show you this car's most important historical entries to help paint the real picture of this basket case BMW. In March, the car was repossessed and sent to auction with around 33,000 miles. In May, the car was offered for sale by the dealer who bought it at auction. Under this dealer's ownership, they put around 3,000 miles on the car, but in the last couple months of their ownership, the car saw a McLaren dealer for service, then days later, the owning dealer marks that they installed a water pump. We'll investigate that shortly. The i8 was then briskly sent back to auction where another dealer purchased and sent it to two independent mechanics before finally sending it to a BMW franchise dealer. Now, I've spoken directly to this dealer and they stated that they suggested an engine replacement to the customer but couldn't provide any further details. Then the car will slip back to auction one last time, at least for right now, to me. But what does all this mean and who would sabotage the car? So the idea that someone is getting their baby repossessed and they don't want anybody else to enjoy it but they don't have any choice but to give it back to the financiers. So they go and break something so that nobody can ever enjoy it again. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of a good fantasy but it's not generally something Something that happens a lot where sabotage can happen is at the auction where somebody on the inside wants to get something like this for a cheaper price so they'll go and generally do stuff that is easy to repair like maybe unplug a connector so the car starts throwing all sorts of codes has a Christmas tree lit up on the dash and then has a lower resale value because of the pictures and the auction report that goes along with the car this car already came with a pretty below average auction report so I expected there to be a handful of issues and which I 
I've found. But the main issue, the overheating one, uh, is one that seems very simple on the surface. Something that could be something very simple or cheap to fix, but something that we're having a heck of a time tracking down. So let's go ahead, bring this car over to Eurocharged Orlando, plug it into their BMW diagnostic computer and see if we can pinpoint exactly what's going on here. Engine covers off. I'm gonna go start it. This is a yep. total cold start. This hasn't ran all morning. So we're gonna hear your reaction on what it sounds like. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get to run without going into gear. There we go. Sounds perfectly fine. Okay. And the sound is like that. All, all three cylinders on this are eight. They sound everything like, kind of like a diesel and the ticket noise, obviously we don't have the covers or anything like that. But they sound like that, that's normal sound. I took an oil sample last night. Okay. No shavings, no nothing yeah, like yeah. that. When you buy an auction car, if the oil's like really clean, that means they it, you know? Uh, okay, they and it. But like, it was a little dirty, so that's good. Okay. I pulled the plugs a little dirty, so they weren't new. Okay. So everything is like good and used, you know, what we yeah. want to see. Yeah, this is it. This is the car. <laughs> you know this car. <laughs> so you heard about this car before? Yeah. This car is online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's online. This car been running from shop to shop. Shop. That's this is the car. The guy that's saying no, oh, it. It's in the transport of foot and the should auction. We pulled the car in the shop and got it up on the lift. We did a quick visual inspection by taking some of the undercovers off first, looking at any of the coolant lines that we could, and just making sure there was nothing out of the ordinary, and we really didn't find anything. These guys right here, huh? This is empty completely right here. Yeah, those are the ones that basically is telling you to loosen up. Okay. In the repair so you can feel it properly. Okay, yeah. Something like that. So is that what it said in the manual? Yeah, yeah those yeah. two. Drop those that two. and then yep. vacuum it, yeah. Lowered the car back down and we began with the bleed procedure using the BMW computer I referenced earlier. The huge benefit of using the computer while running the bleed procedure is that it tells you exactly what to do, when to do it, and monitors how many times you rev it so you don't overdo things or underdo things, all while showing the coolant temperatures live so you can really see how the car is behaving. I gotta tell you, Steven, if we were doing this on like a Ferrari or something, we would have died from the carbon monoxide, but we're being environmentally friendly doing this in a BMW i8. I don't smell anything from that little three cylinder. That's true, and I mean. Now the coolant temperatures just continue to rise and rise the first time we did it, all the way up to 117 degrees Celsius. That's the magic number where the diagnostic computer will actually shut off the BMW i8 so that no major harm is done. The fact that that coolant temperature consistently rose up to that 117 degrees, and we also verified a rising cylinder head temperature using a laser thermometer, likely rules out the idea that our coolant temperature sensor is bad. The next step here was to investigate whether our thermostat was operating properly. Now, the thermostat is actually very simple to get to into this car. You just take the passenger side rear wheel off, and then you can reach in between the frame and the engine, and there's four bolts that hold the housing in place. So here is our thermostat and thermostat housing that comes apart from the water pump, but you can only order it as an assembly with the water pump. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure out exactly how this works. We're gonna run some water in it to show you guys. But a big thing here, if this is installed incorrectly, these notches have to line up or else it won't function properly. And that's where the turn comes in. That's right. That's right. That's what it's I'm wondering, that's gonna be really funny to see if that fixes this car. For real, yeah. Let's say they tried to fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, Non-specialized, let's say, BMW that doesn't have the proper repair procedural tool and they don't know what they're doing, they're just gonna put it like. Uh, yeah, just shove it back in. They yeah, do it like it. I would do it, right? Sure. But, but no, <laughs> well, it's, that's why I brought it to you. Yeah. But, <laughs> You see the water in there? Another way to visualize this, if these notches aren't lined up exactly perfect, if I turn this a little bit, the water will just run out or it could get jammed closed. On our Carfax, it states that a shop replaced the water pump. And it's much easier, again, to get the thermostat out of the car than it is to get the entire water pump out of the car. It's much smaller and just much simpler to access. 
So there's a possibility that maybe the shop just uninstalled the thermostat like we're doing here and put it back in without actually referencing the shop manual and did it out of alignment. Maybe it's just jammed shut. Cooling temperature is too high. Cooling temperature is 20 minutes. Stop it, motion. Okay. okay. Allow the vehicle to cool down and carry out service function again. Mother. How much time are we have we been running right now? Almost 10 minutes. Almost 10? Yeah. It's similar to last time. Yeah, but the last time we start at uh, uh, 70 something degrees. You see where I'm going? I do see where you go, but, but, but this is unscientific. That's yeah, my issue. Yeah. <laughs> it's very unscientific, Steven. Yeah, true. Because we're getting the same outcome no matter what we start at. You're right. So I, I'm thinking this because I think, oh my gosh, look at this. Hold on. I mean, coolant is, coolant is boiling out of the tank and it's closed. So... This is the only thing. Again, I, I don't know if you got to go home or whatever, which is totally no, no, cool. No, 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 I'm good. Thermostat pull. Yeah. Yeah, definitely I want to do that. I mean, if that doesn't fix anything, then we really know we're up against a very strange issue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, down for that now. Okay, let's do it. All right. It's out a second time. Two times in one day. And all we're going to do is just, you're just going to slip that the spring off yeah let's do basically honda style honda style yeah take out the spring of the thermostat leave it that's open it. at all times and see where we go from there man if that makes a difference oh. all i owners that have overheating issues yes come to euro charge orlando they will do a thermostat delete for you <laughs> <laughs> The best modification for any I-8 owner. Right. I would like to let you know Steven's dedication to the I-8. It's now been dark for hours. Everybody uh, except for Earth has gone. And we've got the thermostat out. We're going to vacuum bleed this one more time. And then we're going to run the car. And it's not going to overheat, right? It's not going to overheat anymore. You know what I say? I say if it overheats, right? I got to get home. Okay? What car do I take? The C63 or the M4? Well, you should take this the M4. The M4, right? Yeah. I heard it's got a brand new drive shaft. Got a brand new drive shaft and soon to be like 700 horsepower. 700 horse? Yeah, yeah, I'm taking the M4. Uh, yes. <laughs> like the fuel <laughs> tank ran out. How many degrees are we at? We was 102 for like, it was for like two, like almost three minutes, it, it was like 102 steady. It was 103, 102. It was uh, like on the 11 minute. So on the BMWs, right, that commonly overheat, and the failure is, is a water pump a common failure like in general on BMW, right? Yeah, I mean, the, like, yeah, I mean, every model, uh, like, uh, it's mostly, most of the time it's like M55s mm -hmm. and M54, everything that has like electronic cooling pump. Mm -hmm. It like they fail a lot. Is it the thermostat that fails though or the water pump? Most of the time it's the water pump. Like, And is it time. a physical failure? Like the, the impeller breaks apart or what? No, it's just electronically. Electronically internally, yeah. like the, basically the electronic part is like goes out. All right, big thanks. Earth brought us uh, some gas, full. Got 73 miles of range. Steven is resetting the uh, procedure here. Topped off the overflow tank, which went down a little bit. We're doing it again. <laughs> so for several minutes, it's been staying between like 102 and 103 without the thermostat in. We're about 10 minutes in to the 20 minute procedure again. I mean, before it was shutting off right around now, right? 10 minutes in. Oh yeah. So maybe it has is having some effect. I don't know. This is just like the strangest thing ever. Such a simple idea turned into something complicated. What do we got here? It's hard to see, but you can hear it. It feels like almost like popcorn is popping in here. It's boiling. Could it be the fan?
you know how like fans got two speeds low and high it looks like it's low all the time you know just a couple clicks on the bmw computer steven was able to force our fan into that high speed mode so we could verify that the fan was indeed working properly this also rules out another potential failure point for us but after a few more minutes during this bleed procedure well it overheated again okay it's on high all right calling it for the night thank you very much for your help no problem but Anytime. we're not done we're coming back so strange we'll do some research sometimes you know it, it's best to do a little bit of digging yeah. stop take a breather you want to like when you're on top of the car and you are like you've been like trying to figure out something now your brain goes like, yes so it's best to take a rest, yeah, for sure. hit a crack pipe, and then come back. <laughs> After this test, everybody went home for the night, and Steven took home the shop computer with him because he was perplexed at what was going on here. He did some digging, and he found a sub-article on bleeding the I-8. In the sub-article, it states that for the I-8, you must bleed it for a minimum of 30 minutes, and then it gives you the specifications at where the vacuum should be in the system. This is something we hadn't done all along. And to make sure we did this procedure as effective as possible, I went and got a different what I think to be a better designed vacuum for the coolant system. You see our old vacuum system worked off of a set of grommets that sealed with rubber on rubber contact. This new setup seals with a regular overflow tank cap that you hook up directly to an airline. So there's really no way we can lose any air. If you go back and look at when we were playing a vacuum with our old device, there would be a little bit of crackling and popping coming out of the overflow tank even after a minute or two of vacuuming. I can only assume that cracking and popping is some air bubbles coming to the surface. With our new vacuum, after a minute or two of it running, the water was still as could be. So again, we got to step in the right direction. Here. So before with the other uh, vacuum bleeder we were using, remember it almost was like popcorn. Yeah. Just pop, pop, pop. Yeah. Now, this is just kind of sitting here steady and you know, it's aerating this water. So we've got this running for about 10 minutes. I'd say we're going to leave it on at least another 10, 20. Fulfill the hour-long I-8 bleeding procedure. Now is the vacuum, okay, vacuum's holding. So That's now, good. now we gotta open this. They open that. Oh, wait. You open that. So is it sucking? Oh, what So the coolant temperature is already rising to 104, which is uh, not great. The thermostat should open. Another strange thing though, is that this time around, first of all, we don't have any crackling or bubbling going on in the overflow tank. That's a really good sign, but the fan's not kicking on. And now we've obviously had the fan on before, but you'd think it would kick on with the coolant temperatures getting higher. This is really weird because this is the first time I've seen this with the car engine getting over temp and it not crackling and bubbling. Eventually, the system hit 117 degrees Celsius. The diagnostic computer shut the engine off again. And even though it seemed like we had made a little bit of progress here, I felt completely defeated. I've never had this much trouble diagnosing a cooling system. It's one of the strangest things I've ever encountered. But to make matters even weirder, we had a totally unexpected blowout. You see, the vacuum kit that I bought came with a simple pressure tester. This little hand pump will connect to the special cap that fits over your overflow tank. It will pressurize your system. And if you've got a leak somewhere, it will pull push some of the coolant out of that area so that it's easier to see and you can figure out what you need to replace. Well, when we hooked the pump up to the I-8, after just a few little pumps, I heard a boom and then a bunch of coolant dropped out of the front end of the car. We thought maybe a hose popped off, but all the hoses were still connected. It literally blew up the radiator. You see right here where the plastic tank meets the metal fins, it just split right there. Steven, what did you do here? Blew up the radiator, guys. You... <laughs> At least you admit it. Yeah. All right, we're getting a new radiator. We're gonna throw it in. Yep. Maybe even a water pump thermostat. What do you think? You think that's gonna make any difference? I mean, I probably blew up the radiator, but we probably have a blockage in there. I probably save you some money, like fixing it or anything like that. You see? So... Hey, 
That's the that's the positive way of looking yep. at it. So <laughs> if something blew up, something is wrong. Over a few days time, we've probably got over 24 hours worth of diagnosis into our I-8. And while it doesn't seem like the picture is any clearer, there are a few little changes like the water getting hot in the overflow tank, like the temperatures coming down slightly before rising that tells me we still have an air pocket somewhere in the system. It's the only thing that's really logical to me at this point. Now, we obviously also have a blown radiator that needs to get fixed but why do we have a radiator that just blew up on us during a common pressure test that doesn't make a whole lot of sense and that's where I wonder is there a blockage in the system what was the blockage caused by and it goes back to the sabotage theory we won't really know until we pull the radiator out of the car which is what we're gonna do up next got to take the entire front end of this car off to get to that radiator and another quick note the radiator on the IA has been revised if not once I think twice by BMW now parts are Revisions happen all the time. It doesn't mean that we've got a faulty part, but sometimes part revisions happen because there are defective parts. So it'd be really interesting to see once we install our new radiator. And while we're at it for good measure, I ordered a brand new overflow tank cap because our pressure release valve kept getting stuck in the expansion tank and I ordered a new water pump and thermostat by the time we install all of the main cooling system components together and we take a couple extra measures while we're doing the vacuum procedure to make sure all the air is out of the system and the car is bled properly will all right work again why well, I sure hope so and if you do as well be sure to hit that like button now if you're not already following me on Instagram or I've been posting updates to the BMW i8 project there before anything goes live here on YouTube just go right here click the link in the description box guys i want to thank each and every one of you for watching today and i'll catch you very soon <music>